It's time for us to get into the news review segment. And this morning on the news review segment, we'll be having some conversations. Um, the membership of certain former members of the party have been revoked uh, for supporting an independent candidate. Uh, in the 2024 budget, the conversation uh, continues. The conversations continue. And um, uh, the minority slams uh, Dr. Baumia over comments on um, the 24-hour economy policy. And then in road infrastructure, uh, some uh, areas, some communities are up in arms against the government um, for uh, the state of their roads. Of course, the show is interactive, and so kindly use the hashtag Breakfast Daily for us to hear what you're thinking as you're watching on our various streams. The WhatsApp line is 0204-447-033. We do want to hear from you. Now, you've been joined in the studio. Um, by the government spokesperson on governance and security, uh, Paul Grave from Pombwachi Dankwa. And um, we also have another guest who will be coming in shortly. And um, so we'll just begin. And let me just say hello to you, Paul Grave. Paul Grave, good morning. How are you? David, I'm very well. I Fantastic. thought you were also going to add that yeah. I'm contesting. You yeah. are contesting? Yes, for a North constituency. Oh, I see. Yes, oh, um, wow. I'm a parliamentary candidate okay. uh, for okay. the New Patriotic Party okay. in the primary that will be held um, January of 20th and okay. the picking of the forms this yeah. year 20th. Yeah. So let me greet my good people of a walk on off um, constituency. I greet mm. all of you. Um, I am very certain that they are well because mm. I'm representing them well <laughs> even before <laughs> I become their <laughs> parliamentary candidate um, on TV. So it's good to be here. Mm. And you have such a beautiful um, studio. Thank you should you. bring me more. Hey, oh, we will come <laughs> more. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you. it's good to have you here. All right, so let me just quickly um, read a couple of articles on citynewsroom.com before we get into the stories there. Um, so we have here Bobby Asamoa on heading into this is the newsroom.com. Um, Sadiq Boniface no longer members of our party, says the MPP. Now, um, the leadership of the new patriotic party has announced that hopes in Adoye, Ya Bobe Asamoa Ohene, Nana Ohene Nto, and Boniface Abubakar Sadiq are no longer members of the party after they publicly endorsed and campaigned for independent presidential candidate Alan Sherman Singh. Now, in a statement, the MPP said the four had forfeited their membership of the party for their flagrant breach of the party's constitution particularly Articles 3, 5, A, 4, and 391. Now, the statement signed by the MPP General Secretary, Justin Kodia Frimpong, noted that the Article 3, 5, A, 4 of the MPP Constitution urges all members of the party to abide by and publicly uphold the decisions of the party. Now, additionally, Article 9, Article 3, 9, I of the Constitution provides that a member of the party who stands as an independent candidate against the officially elected member of the party or who joins or declares his or her support for another political party for or another independent candidate when the party has sponsored a candidate in a general or by election automatically forfeits his or her membership of the party and there's a full statement below on the um, citynewsroom.com story there now let me just pick another story um, the, a response to some uh, queries and criticisms that have come up we didn't sack bobbing asamoah and three others they forfeited their membership all right, it has a photograph there, Justin Kudia Frimpong, General Secretary of the party. Now, the MPP has insisted that it did not expel any of its members, but only followed its laid down principles and rules. Now, uh, this follows the announcement by the party that hopes in Adoye, Yabo Abena Samoa, Ohininto, and Anna Ohininto, and Boniface, and Sadiq were no longer members of the party. And it goes on to talk about that and uh, just basically says that it wasn't, a, it wasn't a decision to sack, all right, but it was rather an automatic um, activation of um, articles that were already in the constitution uh, that they forfeited their positions. Now, speaking on an interview on Eyewitness News on City FM, 
Um, Mr. Frimpo insisted that the party has not sacked anybody. It is what the constitution states that we are following. Let me come to uh, Paul Brief this morning. Yes, sir. David, mm -hmm. so um, <clears throat> this is a very simple issue. The New Patriotic Party, it's a party of rule of law. Mm. And it's a party that is guided by traditions. And also a party where everyone is welcomed into the party. We are, however, experiencing some turn of events which is unprecedented within our political party and does not represent our ideals mm. and what we stand for mm. as um, a property-owning democracy, um, political party, libertarian um, political party. Um, and it's because of the primaries that were held this mm. year mm. when we opened up for internal primaries for flag bearership. Mm. And it was open, it was transparent. Every single person who desired to lead in the race came up, um, including former general secretaries like Kwame Japon, um, astute gentlemen like Adainimo, um, former ministers of state like um, Ejako, um, Jogate, um, Apreku, mm. um, sitting vice president, former minister of trade, um, Kujo Alan Chamantin, um, a former um, a, a sitting incumbent MP, mm -hmm. um, Kennedy Japan, and, and the likes. Um, the constitution says that when you have more than five persons contesting, you should have a super delegates conference, okay. which is a conference that is made up of chairman, regional chairman, MPs, to vote the select group mm -hmm. who would represent the ideals of the constituents. We went through vetting. Everybody balloted to pick where they will be on the ballot paper. We went through the 26th August conference. And the delegates decided mm. on five people. Mm. That's what the constitution says. Yeah. For the very first time in the history of the new patriotic party, we had six people, which meant the fifth position was at pair. Mm. In the wisdom and the thinking, we were supposed to even run a runoff to separate the pair, mm. because Adainimo paired up with um, Ejakun. Yeah. But in the wisdom of Ejakun, he ceded to Adainimo to contest. Mm. Then we needed to prepare for the main conference, mm. which is November 4th. Yeah. The November 4th conference, also um, everybody balloted for their space on the ballot paper, um, which was um, Kennedy as number one, the certain vice president as number two, Akutu as number three, and Adainimo as number four. And we went into the conference and the delegates decided and we chose a flag bearer. Mm. As a political party, we have our flag bearer now. That is the sitting vice president, mm. Alhaji Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, who is the flag bearer of the political party. Mm. Let me go back a little bit. There were some grievances that were laid off um, after our super delegates conference mm. by one candidate, that is Alan Kujo Chairman Ting. Yeah. The constitution says that if you have any grievances, you pass it through the, the disciplinary committee mm. and the matter will be addressed. You know, at that time, all we realized was that the flag bearer aspirant, Alan Kujetri has redrawn through a press statement without informing the political party mm. or giving reverence to the political party yeah. of his decision which is unorthodox of what we know the New Patriotic Party to be and the members of the New Patriotic Party to represent. Mm. We were only informed through the media space in a press conference mm -hmm. that he has resigned from the New Patriotic Party. There were other persons that were involved in the campaign with him who are certain members of government and also members of the New Patriotic Party. Mm. Notable amongst them, Ah, Abna, um, the Deputy Minister for Finance and MP for Itiwa, um, and a few others, yeah. Sly, Tete, and Co., who publicly stated that they do much as they respect the decision of flag bearer aspirant 
they do not want to be part of his decision moving into the formation of a butterfly independent candidature. So they withdrew to continue to support the new patriotic party. And yeah. to be fair, in the major election, you saw their support and their will and their might. So it is fair to state that having seen that there's been a public display of support for an independent candidate who has redrawn mm. from the party, mm. resigned from the party publicly without any evocation, but members of the new patriotic party publicly displaying their support for that independent candidate. Mm. When the constitution is explicit that for a political party having elected a flag bearer, none other person should go out to support another flag bearer mm. or another candidate. So you have forfeited that. It was right in the thinking of the National Executive Council. And it was also right in the thinking of the senior party members to ensure that this comes on an official statement. Mm. That having observed publicly your behavior, having observed publicly your utterances, having observed publicly your posture, we would want to remind you that you have already forfeited your membership to the new patriotic party. So there is clarity. So there is no doubt in the mind of anyone that Hope Sinadoye, a very nice gentleman, Nano Hini Into, respected former general secretary, Boniface Abubakar, former minister of state, former MP, Yao Boabian Samoa, former MP, former director of communications, that in the wisdom of knowing what the new patriotic party stands for, mm. And in the maturity of thinking that you would not follow suit the independent candidate of a former flag bearer aspirant and stay with the elephant political party, which is the MPP. But having known and having served this elephant party and served very well in opposition and in government to make a decision to publicly display that you are for an independent candidate when there is a flag bearer, mm. a leader of a political party, you have forfeited it. And so the party had no choice than to activate what the constitution says. For persons who purport to state that we have sacked, mm. there is nothing like that. These are members of our political party who know the constitution very well, yeah. whom we expected that having observed the trajectory especially when the party unanimously grassroots have decided on a singular leader, the first time in the history of the Republic of Ghana to have a leader like that of such pursuit and background to become a flag bearer, never happened in the history of this country. A sitting vice president to become a flag bearer and then also to lead into a major election. Mm. We need a clarity. Mm. And so um, we would wish them well they have nice gentlemen, Hobson Adoye, Nano Hini Into, Boniface um, Abu Bakar Sadiq, Yabu Abin, very nice, perfect gentlemen. We wish them well with their bala butterfly movement. And we would go keenly into the contest of the 2024 general election. And right. we would see what the Ghanaian people would decide upon. But in concluding, I mean, yeah. no doubt in my mind yeah. that the Ghanaian people will choose none other than the new patriotic party to represent them in the 2025 government and that government will be led by president incoming <laughs> alhaji <laughs> dr mahmoud Bonner. all right well i'm going to ask you in a little bit in a little while about um, what the future looks like um, because there's there's a, there's also suggestion and uh, and, and uh, concerns uh, from certain quarters that this is just um, a tip of the iceberg and that the, the, the split that appears to be taking place is, has been led by these four members m shifting. Okay, so I'll come back to you on that. But let me introduce to you my other guest, um, Eric Delano Alifo Esquire. He is a member of the NDC legal team. 
Sir, you're welcome. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Fantastic. How are you? Fantastic. I'm very well, thank Hungry. you. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Sir. Good. Yeah. You, you had a few there in my absence for a few minutes. Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've noticed, you know, the first time I, I met you on set was at Metro TV. Very much. And uh, you, were, you were calm at that time. And uh, later on, I've watched you several times and you begin to speak like Baumi at this time. <laughs> you just, you but he seems pretty yeah. calm to me. Well, he just keep going, you'll see him soon, you know. Really? And yes. And uh, you. A follower for us. I just, a follow up for us, a leader. I just hope that they will introduce <laughs> substance uh, into whatever we are. Well, I want your comments on on what has happened um, and what you're from from your perspective um, as the NDC. Um, what do you see? Um, what do you make of what you see happening, and and, and and what does it foretell for you? Well, you know the the suspension or the dismissal of of uh, Hope Singh and the and now Hinin Tung and the others. Um, in particular, I, I don't have any qualms with that because, mm. well, if they are implementing um, their the constitution, constitution yeah, yeah. I don't really have a problem with that. But you see, the, we, we need to understand the, the root cause. We need to understand what has brought about all of this. And, and it is all because of the determination by the establishment, by the government, to foister a, a particular candidate on, 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 the, on them, on the field of, of uh, aspirants. You see, when I was coming, I, I heard my, my friend say that uh, uh, Mr. Bachajako, in his own wisdom, decided that he would not even go for the second round. It was not just in his own wisdom, in a polite manner like that, you know. He already identified that the, the processes were not right. They were skewing everything in favor of a particular person. And that was what even caused Mr. Alan Chamanti. In fact, everybody would, anybody who followed NPP politics over the years, and uh, you know, most of us we are we are we are no kids, you know. And we watch the Fourth Republic, the the entirety of the Fourth Republic. If you follow them carefully, you would see that the candidate before the emergence of Dr. Baumia, the, the the person that would have been the logical uh, uh, successor to Nana Kufado was Alan Chumantin. It, it, it was when you look at how uh, uh, Professor Dubois was elected, and then uh, Kufo came, and then Nana Kufado came. And uh, Alan Chumante came, um, uh, no, and yeah, Nanakufado came, and Alan Chumante contested Nanakufado about three times, at least two major ones, and then his umbrella ups and all of that. You would see that obviously he was the one in line. You see, then when all of a sudden, for two reasons, two reasons, one, to, to protect the, the thievery and the corruption of the current government, you know, and they needed somebody who would come and protect them and would not go after them. They, they need to get a, a candidate that uh, would sing to their tune or would, 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 would dance to their, their tune, the drums. So they, they, they chose uh, Dr. Baumia. And then also the second reason being that they, they wanted to dispel this notion that NPP is an account party. You know, that has been uh, age-old belief and uh, we have seen it. And so because they needed, so for these two reasons, well, they were prepared. Well, there's nothing wrong with dispelling thoughts well, if, it's said, not, if it's not true. No, I'm only stating the fact that this is what happened. I'm not saying whether it is right or wrong and whether even that would actually dispel it is another thing altogether. Okay. They, can, they can decide mm -hmm. that, well, this is what we are doing. But, you know, the MPP being a can party, that notion that everybody believes um, is, is not only because they were, were not able to select an account uh, a presidential candidate, you know, we, we have worked the party over the years, even the formation of the party and everything. So I don't know whether that notion will go away just by uh, electing Dr. Bamiya. But I'm only stating that these are the two main reasons, uh, from my perspective, why they have to force Dr. Baumia on, on, on them, even when the, the, there was a crack, a major crack, because somebody, of a, the stature of a, a Chamantin, resigning from the party, forming a movement, that did not even perturb them because. They were, they were so determined for these two reasons, so determined that they, and then they pushed him. And so this is what is leading to all of this. So people need to understand that. It's not just a matter of, uh, and, and by the way, you know, the second deputy speaker of parliament mm. contested his election as an independent candidate. Isn't that correct? Mm. Yes. And uh, I, I remember that even Anakuvado even went to his constituency during the campaign and told the people that that was not his candidate. Mm. That was not the party's candidate. He was not going to work with him. So mm. nobody should vote for him. But when he won, and when they were having problems in parliament, if we, after all the skirmishes, after all the things they did to um, annex uh, or to steal about six seats from MP, uh, NDC, they still didn't have the majority, a, a proper majority in parliament. And so they had to work with somebody that they had despised, somebody they had defied. You see, so clearly this one 
you would see. So if people were just looking at it that way, these people have uh, Adoye and uh, Boabin and Co. have supported independent candidate, the candidate is other than what the party has selected, and so we are dismissing him, and they think that, oh, we are just implementing our constitution and all of that. Then the problem goes beyond that. And if you look at all the people who are following uh, uh, Mr. Chimantin, mm. all those volunteers, all the people who <coughs> followed him to even the, the, um, uh, the funeral of uh, uh, Mrs. Kufo, yeah. Teresa Kufo, yeah. Some of those people were obviously card-holding members, and perhaps some of them were even police station executives or maybe Where are they going to get to them also? Because they followed him. They, they, <clears throat> they, they are supporting him. It's obvious. So we are waiting. that They are, they are going to do proper audit and see uh, which people are uh, card-holding members. Uh, well, some, uh, party sympathizers who are not card-holding members may not be dismissed anyway because we, we need numbers. Mm -hmm. But those who are card-holding members, they should do proper audit and find out how many of those other people are following him and that are not following Baumia, and then they should dismiss all of them and let's see. And so they should not just make scapegoats. <laughs> yes, they should, yes, they should dismiss all of them and let's see. Yeah, because clearly when you look at the numbers, yeah. you cannot tell me that some of those people were so, not even police station executives. Okay, so are me, they going to go and dismiss all of them? Let me, let Do you me, think so? Let me ask they will you, not. Let me ask you, from the, yes. from the NDC's yes. point of view, yeah. um, knowing that people like um, Boniface yes. and uh, Hobson, Yes. At one point in time, I hear where all members of the NDC, were you looking to court them and bring them back? Well, I, I, I'm not too sure. Is that sure. a possibility? Well, I, 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 I don't know. I, I think that those people have um, been notoriously NPP over the, over the, <laughs> over the, <laughs> over the many years. Uh, They've shown their colors too much. Yes, yes. So, so I, don't, I don't know whether uh, it would be a useful um, exercise task to do going to them. be trying to call, but of course, mm. anybody who thinks that because we all know that the nation builder is coming back, John Mahama is coming back. Anybody who <laughs> buys into his vision and wants to come and, and then support him, why not? We'll open our hands and we we'll take the person and then we we'll pursue the vision, the vision that is giving them sleepless nights and, and all of that. And everybody is talking about it, and I know we are going to get to that. When we get to that, we shall, we shall delve deeper. Okay, and it's still the news review segment and on Breakfast Daily. And uh, my, my guests are uh, Paul Grave uh, from Pom Bwachit Dankwa. He is a government spokesperson on governance and security, as well as Eric Delano Alifo. He is a, um, a lawyer and a member of the uh, NDC legal team. Now, um, let me come to you, Paul Grave. Um, so you've heard all the comments uh, that um, Eric has made. Um, Yababwe yeah, someone made a comment and he said, um, and I'm not going to read the article, but I'm just going to make a comment <clears throat> based on what he, the headline here. He said on Face to Face on uh, CCTV last night, speaking to Omar Sanda, he said, um, the MPP is now self serving. It's time for change. What are your comments? And is it what's happening now? Does it foretell of future chaos in the party? Not at all. Um, David, I don't think that um, the New Patriotic Party, a party that was formed, I mean, years ago beyond this um, republic, a party that um, was formed as a union government, mm. um, is self-serving. I, I think that um, for, for persons that uh, people looked up to, like Yao Boabeng, who served as an MP with the political party as a vehicle mm. and served as the party's communications director, uh, should refrain from making these comments. Mm. Um, I think that um, he needs to be circumspect. And I would um, extend same circumspection to other persons that have forfeited um, their roles and um, opportunities to be part of the new patriotic party to refrain from projecting chaos when there isn't any. Mm. Because um, I hear um, my, my, my learned colleague, um, senior state about Alan being the next in line. I mean, in terms of um, how he just opposes his argument. But um, to make a more advanced argument, if there was anyone that was next in line for the NDC after John Evans Sata Mills, had he not died, was not John Dramani Mahama. Mm. And even when um, Ivan Zantamels um, died in that time, if there was supposed to be 
um, an internal election um, for for the NDC, who wouldn't have been um, John Dramani Mahama, who would be because if we were supposed to be following next in line, then John Dramani Mahama was nowhere close um, to it. I mean, yeah, I think the next in line argument is a bit redundant it, because exactly, it's not a chief exactly, no exactly. Running, so. And and really, I mean, um, MPP as a political party has lots of leaders. We've trained out leaders, which is why every time when there's opportunity for people to either go to parliament or to go to assembly or to be a polling station executive or a constituency executive or a regional executive or even a national executive or even to become flag bearers, you would find many more people because it's a political party of leaders. And if you assert yourself and the people so fail that you are the right person to lead, I think the people will make a decision. So that notion that the system had a candidate, it falls flat on, on propaganda because this system never had a candidate. There is no way that this system had a candidate. al Haji Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya has worth his salt. He's worked very hard. To be fair, the other persons that um, declared their intention, declared their intention way before he hit the ground running to campaign. I mean, we saw how the resignations came in from Minister of Trade to Minister of Agreg. The resignations were coming in. They declared their intentions well over and started even launched their campaign um, on national TV. And people, they started engaging the delegates. So really, there's neither here nor there. The man is worth his salt. We have a leader. We are moving forward with the leader. I don't think that um, we would um, be interested in buy comments. Um, from persons that have already forfeited. Because if you are forfeited, you should focus on your independent candidate char and ensure that um, you make an impact mm -hmm. that you so desire in the, in the history of um, this country. But I tell you of a truth. We know the history of independent candidates in this country. This election we are going into, in the last election, there were about 17 million voters plus. This election, by estimation, there will be about 18 to, 18 to close to about 19 million based on those that were not 18 and have turned 18 and then those that um, never voted and have registered to be voting. We should be inching around 18-something million people. It's a major election. It's not an election of a small political party. It's a major election. If within the political party you could not show your worth and your sort, I wish you luck in the major election. And I hope that you can be able to bounce back after a, a, a defeat in the 2024 general election. Hmm. So let's allow them to do what they so desire to do. But our political party is very focused. We have a clear leader who has said that it's a season of possibilities, who has opened up the umbrella for everybody to become a part of the new patriotic party, invited academia, invited private sector, invited young people, spoke about Generation Z, told us that farmers and agriculturists and workers and people in the labor market, everybody has a place in the new patriotic party. That is what is a threat to the NDC. And uh, we, we would not be um, sidetracked or mm. lose our focus. We are consistent with our mission and consistent with our agenda. All right. Fantastic.